Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And uh, plenty of mailbag tonight, the things that go on during the ad breaks, I tell you. Uh, plenty of mailbag, let's get straight into it. Hi David, my partner and I spent a couple of hours on Port Phillip Bay, Sunday Arvo. This is from Andy and Elaine. Uh, with not much biting, we managed a couple of flatties, a large toady, and Elaine's first fish, which was a banjo. There you go, there's a photo. Did you a banjo? Um, she actually caught one more fish than you the other week at Lake Tyres, didn't she? Did. I just yeah. want to rub that in. Oh, it's uh, oh, a oh. banjo that day. Yeah. <laughs> she was so excited and begged me to send it in for catch of the day or bad luck you're not putting it on catch of the day because you can't eat them um, but a new but a new that's a prerequisite for catch of the week that's a prerequisite for catch of the week if you want it goes on you cook up in a bottle of scotch or something a new convert to fishing and one more for the target one million there you go good job. we both love the show and look forward to watching it each week keep up the good work cheers Andy and Elaine good to see that we've got a convert uh, next time it'll be something nice and edible and just keep punching along there alright uh, Alex writes into us Alex is the vice president of Footscray Angling Club and he writes uh, Hi Kramer and boys love your show I was hoping you could send a shout out to our boys from the Footscray Angling Club who have taken out the 2016 Interclub Brim Masters competition held on the Maribyrnong River I think they're up against the Shepherd yeah. and under 12s but they <laughs> no, but they hey, wins a win the wins, uh, are, no, wins a win it's, it's yeah. all good here's the photos I'm not yeah. in fact our little club have gone yeah. for, for gone the four Pete and won this comp four yeah. years in a row Plus and given the fact, I was just about to say that <laughs> and given the fact there are over 90 anglers from 13 different clubs competing. A huge effort. Well done. All just and also, just another shout out to Marty and the team of the Essendon Angling Club who host this comp each year. Um, they've been disqualified for eight years for drug offence. Oh, no, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't say that. It says who hosts the comp each year, uh, which just gets bigger and better every year. It's really great to have a comp like this which draws in anglers from fishing clubs all over Melbourne and has a terrific social aspect also. Um, Do we know who, who was the young fellow with the trophy? I've uh, got no idea. Okay, well, if you're watching, young fellow, yeah. give us a call, tackle Lord Mornington. Yeah. I'm going to sort you out with a new shirt. There you go. <laughs> new shirt. Well done, mate. Thanks, Alex, for sending yeah. that in. It's, uh, it, it is great to see fishing clubs doing that sort of stuff. Oh, and yeah. I know the state government is about to announce that $2,000 grant for uh, for all the people in fishing yep. clubs to help them boost these sort of activities and get that social aspect going. Uh, let's keep punching through. David, uh, this is from Warren Simpson. Thanks for the good talk the other night at, uh, down at Cranbourne. Well worth attending. On a side note, and definitely one not so good is that on Saturday we headed down to Port Welshpool to be greeted by signs stating that the coin ticket machine is going to be removed and that one would need to log on to the Parkmobile website. Hey, we another to, one. This Here is we go. everywhere, another isn't it? Another one. To pay your daily yearly fees. No date as to when the coin ticket machine was going to be removed was given on the signs, mm. nor is there one on the South Gippsland Shire web website which gives no indication of this upcoming change. Don't get me started. Yeah. Well, I'm so, worried. Yep. Don't get me started. Yeah. Uh, next one, Gary Anderson writes in from Mount Eliza. G'day, boys. I'm a great fan of the show and enjoy it every week. Just two things I'd like to bring up. My friend Tony from Brunswick, wink, wink, right? <laughs> Fictional character in oh, brackets. Yeah. Oh, mate. Drives down to Mornington to do, a, to do a spot of fishing. He tows his new boat down to the Mornington Pier, only to find he cannot use the coin machine. What is going on? It's in the pile. Uh, and it is the no longer in operation. Pile. He reads the sign stating that he must use the Park Mo Park Mobile app. He doesn't have a smartphone. It's 4 a.m. on set Sunday morning. What does he do? We can walk to the Mornington Pier and the beach for free. We can park our cars for free, but we can't we can't pay to launch our boats. It's just wrong. Absolutely. And his second point, hmm. what is the most humane way to kill a fish? I gather just letting it drown in fresh air isn't right. No. No. Uh, a few oh. different ways. Bleed it. Um, spike brain it. Spike, spike it. Mm. Yeah. Um, donger. You can get yeah, a donger. As long as you dispose of them quickly yeah, and they're struggling. Bite yeah. it too. Preserves the meat. <laughs> That's the chef way. <laughs> <laughs> just start gnawing into Charlie it straight up. Heads off. <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> Shane writes into us. G'day Dave. Just, make, just want to make a comment on the plight of the Coast Guard. There's an easy way to fix this problem by having all the boating licenses and marine related courses done by the Coast Guard. There are too many training organisations that are doing boat licence training where everybody passes and people come away knowing nothing about boating. No idea, some of them. That's what Have they, they come on. No idea. Charlie, no idea, come on. No, no. 
I did. <laughs> That's why you pay extra, though. That's why you get your license. Well, having uh, the Coast Guard do it all, it might just give them some finances. That yeah, is a go. damn good, good idea. idea. Mm. Um, I'll skip that one. Uh, G'day, boys. I'm a 14-year-old boy who goes fishing with his dad quite often. We launch off St Kilda and we go very close to the channel and see what we can get. I looked over at a ship and it had a giant net on the back, most likely in the water. Is this the reason why Port Phillip Bay is pretty poor fishing? Uh, is this the reason why whiting and snapper are hard to get? Uh, what, do you bo- what do you boys know? Oh, we saw this net on a round month ago. That's a bit hard to read. Yep. Um, that was from young Jesse. Thanks for the email, Jesse. Look, I reckon if you're out near the channel, it's not going to be the same. It's, it's probably going to be the guys that um, do pilchards. Yep. And quite frankly, I reckon that's a pretty good practice and there's hardly any bycatch. And I reckon they should have been left in. But anyway, uh, mm. that's the way it is. Um, and that's it for Mailbag. If you'd like to write to me, all these blokes, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au. A couple of little things we want to cover as well. The yellow goo all over that fish last week, Trelly. Yes. I said, Ross Wynn Stanley, get on it. Ross writes, <laughs> Dave, I'm on the case. Oh, we Dave. used to have people in fisheries, Victoria, who could answer these sort of questions. Don't get me started. <laughs> uh, but anyway, g'day, Dave. Uh, he also wrote, fish pathologist Ben Diggles reckons that if that fish was a once-off, the yellow stain was probably bile that had oozed out from the puncher or lesion near the fish's right pectoral fin. Oh, yeah. There you go. There we go. Um, I don't know. I think the well, Dave who sent it in said it could attacked it with a yellow texter. Yeah, yeah, it does a bit. It looks could, like yeah, that. So. Well, makes sense. Well. And Trelly, our last one we want to cover um, mm. a couple of weeks ago, Ads, you and I, we fished in the Aqua Cup down at Lake Tyres. Yep. Didn't do too oh, well. Oh, you did oh, terribly. I, I, t- I attended. You, oh, you yeah. attended and watched me catch a few. <laughs> yeah. um, but Steve Viddler's wife, Barb, is it? Yes. Have a look at the crack of fish. Oh, now I couldn't get hold of this oh, photo. Oh. Now, that's what happened. You know, I get this <laughs> message that, that comes through and they say, you know, Dave didn't mention, <laughs> and Adam, <laughs> that they got beaten by Steve's wife, Barb, as well. Hey, I've ridden the trip off. And according well. to me, I never even went. That's a crack of fish. Look at that. Good <laughs> on you, Barb. That's a, and that's I apologise to Barb because we couldn't get hold of that photo yeah. at the time. But uh, they How, did. They won with that fish. I mean, that was a was cracker. That I think it was not. No, that was 92 or 94. I was going to say it was a cracker yeah. fish. So anyway, coming up, this week's hot spots, and we tell you our favourite spots to go this coming long weekend, next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's fact about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, because this is the show. We'll show.